All right, today we're checking out the Air Force Condor. Today's PCP was sent over here by Pyramid Air. They're the company that makes Airgun Channel possible, so you know how to thank them. There'll be a link in the description if you want to grab the Air Force Condor that we're looking at today, or any one of hundreds of awesome PCP rifles. Air Force makes quite a few models that are based on basically the same platform, and they're all just variations of the same PCP. And my first PCP actually 20 years ago, and the only PCP I owned for over 10 years was the Air Force Talon. All these models are available in 177 20 caliber, which they say combines the best of 177 and 22. So 177 20 caliber, 22 caliber, and 25 caliber. Today we're checking out the Condor in 22 caliber. As I said, they have a lot of different models. Just type in Air Force, check it out on pyramidair.com. A couple of my favorites are the Air Force Talon P, which is a super awesome little powerhouse carbine, I guess you'd call it. Over 50 foot pounds and 25. That thing just looks awesome. And then anytime you see SS, it just means that it has a full shroud. So that stands for sound suppressed or sound suppression. As well, the Condor is available in red and blue. Air Force also makes one called the Air Force Edge, and that's their dedicated 10 meter gun. None of these guns are regulated, but they are known for their accuracy. So they all have Lothar Walther barrels. Here's some hardcore specs on the one I got here today. It says it's going to shoot a 22 caliber pellet 1,250 feet per second if I want it to. The other cool thing about all these Air Force is that they're fully adjustable. You just dial it up and down, tune it into the proper speed for your projectile, and you're good to go. And that includes shooting slugs. This is a single shot. 38 inches overall, so it's a 24 inch Lothar Walther barrel. This is not the SS model, so if you wanted sound suppression, get the SS model. This just has a nice barrel sticking out. You can get an adapter from Donnie FL that will allow you to put one half UNF LDCs on this. I always forget to order those, so I don't have one today. This is gonna be kind of a loud video. These are very lightweight. This only weighs six pounds, 6.1 pounds actually. It's got a 11 millimeter dovetail on top. Automatic safety, got a rubber butt plate, high on the loudness scale. If you want backyard friendly, definitely go for the SS models. It says it has a five pound cocking effort. As I said, it's a single shot, so the way you cock it is you push the bolt forward, that cocks it, you load your ammo, and then close that all the way, and you're ready to fire. When the fort's open, it actually won't let you fire. And once you close the bolt, then you're automatically in the safe position, just pop that oh, safety, safety off when you're ready to fire. All right, that's the first stage right there. It's very light and then has a two stage match grade trigger, but it's not adjustable, but it is set to perfection already. So it's adjustable power with multiple settings. 490 cc cylinder it says it operates at 206 bar or 3000 PSI. It says the 24 inch Lothar Walther barrel has a twist rate of one in 16. Says you can also buy 12 inch or 18 inch barrels and change them out very easily. Doesn't require any special tools. As well, these are built in the USA. It says the Condor delivers from 600 feet per second up to 1400 feet per second in 177. And it's recoilless. It says one inch accuracy at 50 yards. I'll bet we can do better than that. It says it's accurate and powerful. This PCP offers extreme flexibility. If you guys remember that little contest that I had, Corey, the contest winner, was shooting his Air Force and he was tuning it up and down. He had added a regulator. So adding a regulator is not too hard. It's just what's called an inline regulator. And I believe you just screw it on the end of your tank and then screw your tank in as normally. And it maybe adds an inch or two to your length of pull. But then you have a regulator and a hammer spring tension adjuster. And that's what a lot of people do with these Air Force guns is they add their own regulator. The scope I'm using today is one of only two scopes that I ever use in my videos. You guys are either going to see my Helix, which I got from FX a long time ago, and I've been using it ever since. Or when I have a dovetail mount, I go with my Hawkeye. So there will be a link in the description to my scope. All right, in the comments, you guys are saying a lot like you want to know about slugs. Does this gun shoot slugs? This is a group that I shot at 36 yards off a full tank, and it'll do two groups like this before you get any change in the point of impact. But that is shooting these gigantic 40 grain, 22 caliber slugs. You can barely push them into the chamber, which is perfect because you want that rifling to engage. 
You can tell there's a lot of power coming out, at least with this straight barreled version. It's got a little bit of kick, but once you get used to that, it's really easy to hit the bullseye. These slugs are three times heavier than like a Crossman 22 caliber pellet. So here's a 40 grain slug next to a 13.43 grain pellet. You can see what I'm talking about. So you're basically shooting three pellets. As well, the BC on a slug is much better, sometimes 10 times better than a pellet because of the way it's shaped and the sectional density. So it's going to drop less. 36 yards away, perfect. When I tried to see what ammo the Condor was tuned for out of the box, it shot every single thing I had way too fast, including even the 40 grain slugs, which were the heaviest slugs that I had. And as you can see, my settings were already down very, very low on this gun. So I was on two with my highest power level being 12. And I was still shooting those 40 grains too hard. All right, you guys, these are the Zahn slugs. They sell these at Pyramid Air now too. I'll leave a link in the description. These are 40 grain. I believe the FX slugs that are very popular are also 40 grain. So let's see what speed these are traveling. Well, it barely fits in there. I like it. So you have to loosen the screw that's directly below your power wheel. And then you can freely move the wheel. I went from wherever it was, 13, down to 1 on the power wheel. And left it there. And then what do you know? It was shooting 890 feet per second. Three bullseyes in a row. Check this out. And that took my slug groups from two or three inches. Now I'm getting dime sized groups. Shot number one, shot number two, shot number three. With 40 grain slugs. I'm gonna call out the FPS. 892. 917. 923. 913. 901. Why well, I wonder if I could have got that last one a little better. 896. Oh, slipped on the trigger, damn it. That would have been in the black, I think. 845. Look at that, you guys. Bam. So we got 10 spot on shots if you ask me. That would have been a sweet group. You want a gun that shoots slugs, so that's about the best slug shooter I've found. We were having part of our house painted, so there was actually workers right next to me. I felt kind of weird shooting while they're working, so I just called it a day on this one. But then the next day I got out there before they got here. And once I got used to the recoil, Check out these groups I was shooting with the 40 grain Zon slugs. All right, I got a full tank, 36 yards away, 40 grain Zon slugs. You gotta know it's gonna go in the bullseye. As soon as any doubt creeps in, you're going to miss. Anyway, that's that's how it's done right there. That's a full tank, you guys. All right, do it one more time here. Oh, sh Oh, painters are here. Okay. I'm not sure what happened there. I still hit the bullseye. I'll take it. It's time for me to go, but that's pretty darn good. I'm not sure if maybe I didn't close my door all the way and latch it correctly, but the painter showed up and I had to go ahead and call it. I filled my bottle back up and it was business as usual. Never happened again. What did happen again was I dropped this gun on the ground, and I know you guys love it when you can see a fine PCP hit the dirt. So here's how that happened. Seven five pounds with the aluminum bottle. Damn it. A lot of you guys watch this on your phone, so you didn't notice, but those of you on the big screen may have seen the giant scratch down one side of this gun. It didn't come that way.
To get the tank into the condor, you actually have to remove the fill port and the pressure gauge. That confused me for a second. I was actually making a video to send Pyramid Air and say, did you guys send me the wrong gun? Nice. I dropped it. And then I realized, man, just take those two things, put them back on. That's obviously what you're supposed to do. So I did it. Worked perfectly. There is a little piece that can fall out, but that goes right here inside the quick disconnect fitting. Anyway, you just screw your tank in as tight as it can go. Put those two things back in. The pressure gauge, you don't want to over tighten. So you're just going to hand tighten it as tight as you can with your hand and then maybe give it a half turn. The fill port, you have to snug up as hard as you can get. Obviously not as hard as you can get, but you have to snug it up really hard. You'll see when you go to take it off how tight it is. You want to do the same tightness about. You want to screw your tank in and hand tighten it as hard as you can. Then you replace your fill port and gauge. Then the last thing you're going to loosen your buttstock, line it up perfectly straight up and down, and you'll be set. This is something you're only going to have to do one time. So it's really no big deal. Okay, this is day three and there's no painters. Back to my normal shooting spot. And I set up at a very special 54 yards away. And we're shooting nothing but slugs in this entire video. So again, I got my trusty 40 grain on slugs and we're hunting bullseyes at a very special 54 yards away. That was a bullseye I saw it. Dang, I'll take it. That last one I screwed up. Let's just sail one more in there. Bam. Six shots in one inch and 50 yards, just like they said. I'll take that. So we're sighted in. We can do some blasting now. <laughs> that was flat, so we'll take a look at it. It might be bent now. Oh, I went right down. Don't know if we can flip one of these. Possibly. Oh, they're just slamming to the pavement. Ooh. Here's a sample of the destruction that the 40 grain hollow point will do to a target. Usually you don't see damage like this unless you're shooting at least a 30 caliber. This is again at 54 yards. Oh my gosh, this guy's been like peeled away. Wow. Ouch. Whoa. That's some crazy stress marks right there. I've never seen that on a cam before. But that's definitely, we made that with our slugorama. All right, we got a ticked off neighbor dog. Let's go for this little guy first. Center mass. Vaporized them. Vaporized them. Batman, you ready? Oh, slip on the trigger, still got him. Wow, I've been waiting like five years to shoot that thing. <laughs> nice. Oh, explosive power. So you gonna nail this one at the top. We winged them. The most important thing about the Air Force PCPs that I haven't mentioned is that they're very lightweight. So if you're actually using the rig for hunting, these Air Force PCPs, especially the Condor, is perfect. The power and accuracy is definitely there. So you should be able to take out whatever you're shooting at in the first shot, especially with a 40 grain slug. I know this Condor came out way before the Texan, but they should rename it the 22 caliber Texan basically because it's just so powerful. 
like I said, you guys, this was on power level two. I had to turn it down. All right. So I'm not even trying to turn this up anymore. But boy, go find the biggest slug you can find. Turn that baby up and you'll be really putting out some power. All right, everybody. That's it for me on this one. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to the Pyramid Air Cup, so I don't think I'll be shooting. I think I'm just going to run around and film famous people, in quotes. So we'll have some good content coming out of that little adventure. All right, everybody. Till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.